So I've been wanting to make a video on treats for beasts for a long time because not only is it like insanely surreal and not enough people talk about it, it's like super fucking cool. Um, nobody talks about the beasts. I feel like there's a lot of underlying lore going on with these beasts, so I'm going to go through every episode and I'm going to talk about my interpretations of each episode and like give a conclusion to what they're supposed to be at the end of the video. So the first episode that they show up in is called Story Time. There's a dad telling his baby a bedtime story with this like picture book about a bunch of random stuff. But at the end they mention a seam. I think you say it. Seam. Whatever. A beast. And then it cuts to a cut scene and shows that the beasts were formerly more primal. Kind of like animals. Birds. It's a mom beast feeding its three babies this, like, life that it sucked out of this tree. So, that's pretty much all for the first episode. I mean, not a lot to see here. I'll go back on it, but not a lot initially. The next video that they show up in is called Plastic Men. In contrast to the last time we saw the beasts, they can talk now. Even in, like, a weird, strange way. I mean, they're kind of evolving. They can talk. The beast says, Plastic men want to tickle me in the wilderness. They watch as I caress my exposed spine. I'm ashamed of my own body. This video makes me think that the humans would come and kind of be on or kind of torture the beasts if they found them in the wild. It's almost like humanity kind of hated the beasts. But as the beasts grew more sentient, they became more afraid of the humans and kind of felt shame about being a creature like they are. You know, I almost wonder if the humans kind of made them feel, like, alienated. I feel like humans might have been intimidated by their evolution, almost. This is just interpretation. That's just how I see it. So the next video, which is the most popular video, is called Beasts. They sing about their jobs and their places in the world, and they kind of almost exactly mimic humanity. And at the end of the song, the beast mentions its job being to repopulate the world, kind of, and implies that one mother would have several kids. My theory about this is that the beast somehow overtook this version of our planet from the humans and made it their own. As they evolved, they fell into the same pattern that humanity did by overworking everyone and overpopulating, as he mentions in a later video. They obviously were very overpopulated at some point much like we are now also fun fact beasts have like a race of pink beasts that live in tribes and stuff so hmm, fun fact the next video they show up in is treats for beasts they're on a tv show that the sun is watching and they kind of resemble more of the primal beasts in this television show and their dialect is like very minimal like the primal beasts too they show another clip of the show called Heaven and Hell, where two beasts die and one goes to heaven and one goes to hell. They both hate it. Heaven and hell are equally as bad. It's pretty much the moral of the story. These beasts are more evolved in this TV show, rather than like the first one with the primal beasts. I almost wonder if the humans in our world watch the TV the same way the beasts watch us as the cave beast mentioned in a later video. So for this next video, which this is kind of far-fetched, this is more of a theory section right here, but the main guy, and he's watching a show called Birdies, which kind of mimics the story time episode where the primal beast would feed its chicks, but instead it's a human dressed up as like a monster and feeding these like three little chickens. And I almost wonder if it's supposed to be humans mocking their culture you know kind of mocking the beasts like back to the back to our origins you know because as i said before humans weren't always fond of the beasts so i, I almost wonder if this is like kind of tying into that to where they're just kind of making fun of them so the next video is technically a, a you know a cameo of the beast but it's not really lore relevant but i'll still add it called treats for beasts the music 
He just stabs the word, word, and says, Fuck words! Fuck words! Just putting this here for shits and giggles, you know, it's nothing lore relevant, but still a beast, so gotta include it. So the last video up to date is Tits for Beast. Whatever. This is the first video where the beasts are actually fully communicating with a person. So the main guy goes into a cave and asks the beast for his wisdom. The beast claims that they watch the humans on televisions through surveillances that they snuck around because if they went into the human dimension, they'd instantly be recognized. The beast preaches about the mistakes that its kind has made and offers advice on how to fix it. They were overpopulated and they actually changed things and made things better, unlike humanity. The beast also mentions how humans will die out eventually and come back after the death of the earth. But when they come back, they'll be back at square one, you know, humans will be cavemen again. But he hopes that they'll be slightly smarter cavemen this time around and learn the lesson, just like the beast did. This kind of makes me think of the beast's origin. I wonder if their planet died and restarted and then they evolved and instead of following the same loop over and over again they learned from their ancestors mistakes and broke the cycle for their species. Also fun fact, beasts can read minds I guess. The beast also mentions that it's friends with the creature from the first episode on the channel who wants to gnaw on human bones. So that was another fun fact is those two are homies. So, in conclusion, my interpretation for the beasts is that they all started off like we did. Animalistic, like primal, cavemen. They evolved after the humans, but quicker than the humans did. They were treated very poorly by humanity because humanity was kind of threatened by how fast the beasts evolved in comparison to us. And they shamed them and they tried to kind of torture them and pick on them to keep them in line, but eventually the beasts took over the planet, or somehow the humans all died off. Whatever happened, who knows. And the beasts were the only ones left. Instead of learning from humanity's mistakes, they made the exact same mistakes themselves. After the population got out of control, they realized that they needed to break the cycle to better their lives, and everyone's lives pretty much, and it worked. Now they live happily and content with their life and death cycle and watch the humans in our world struggle for like amusement because we were picking on them I mean it's only fair if they were to pick on us I think it proves that humanity is just kinda doomed to implode on itself no matter what we do because we're selfish we're not like the beasts we can't overcome our greediness you know anyways I hope you like this video I've been a huge treats for beasts fan since I was a kid and I'm so happy they're getting more recognition also another thing I wanted to mention is I wanted to give a shout out to fluid factory He's the one who made the I Love Jesus songs and stuff like that, and he even made me a video, which was su super fucking cool, and I just wanted to shout him out because nobody gives him any recognition or anything. Anyways, thank you for listening to my ramble. Please go check out Treats for Beasts. It's fucking awesome. I think you guys love it. If you like surreal shit, then go check it out. Another, another thing I wanted to bring up in the Treats for Beasts video that it's kind of unrelated to the beasts and everything, whatever. Um, there's a few videos I feel like they're supposed to represent sexual assault. And it's, this is my interpretation personally. It, I mean, it doesn't matter what you think. Um, the Plastic Men video with the exposed spine and, um, the, let me think off the top of my head. I'm just doing this as a little bit at the end. <laughs> Um, episode with the baby getting tickled by the grandpa or dad or whatever it is. That's, I mean, come on, it's like really obvious what that's supposed to be. And the video with the little girl with the, uh, taking the candy from a stranger. That's another one that I think is really supposed to be, you know, a, a homage to that. And I think it's really well done because it's so subtle that... If you don't know, you don't know. But if you do know, you do know. You know what I mean? It's just something I can really appreciate with his videos. And, yep, just had to add that little bit at the end. <laughs>